what's going on guys uh this is frank whack duh um i should just stop saying that you guys know who i am by now um if you don't hi i'm frank uh welcome to the channel um so for this interview we had the video up and if you follow me on facebook you've heard that there's been a little bit of issues going on um with copyright and stuff like that we used a scene from tokyo ghoul um for those of you that have watched the anime it's the very end of the first episode um where Kaneki is kind of dealing with the fact that he's becoming a ghoul. When we put the video up, within minutes we got hit with a, a copyright claim and the video was banned worldwide. We really wanted this intro because it was really cool. It was really, really, really well done. Siwa did a great job. Uh, I believe fully we were in fair use and so after re-editing didn't work, we went to, um, claim, to, do, to put a dispute on the claim. Which basically is like when, because YouTube's bots basically decided that I was using copyrighted material, which I am, but I'm doing it in fair use. Um, I was using this scene to give an example of Austin Tyndall's work, who I'm interviewing in this video. So we, we filed the claim, and nothing had ever happened like this before. Um, usually it was either like the claim was just removed, which it should be because it's in fair use, or it was uh, like I was denied basically and the copyright just stayed. Um, I never, never been hit with anything this severe. Um, we got hit with a copyright strike, which basically means for like the next six months we're going to be playing things super, super clean. Um, we're not going to try anything fancy. We're not going to do anything that we think might get us hit with copyright. Um, for fear of losing the channel. Uh, sorry for taking so long to explain what's happened. Um, but without any further ado, Frank Wack interviews Austin Tindall. What's going on guys? I'm Frank Wack here at Arkansas Anime Festival Spring 2016. That's a really long title. So, it's cool though. I agree. I'm, I'm here today with Mr. Austin Tindall. Um, Wait, hang on. Okay, go. Just, just short fun fact before we get started. Um, when I was doing um, my one minute spotlight videos to promote the con, for whatever reason, I missed the in in your name almost every time. <laughs> and so, doing, I did the whole video. I scripted it. I recorded it all, calling you Tittle. <laughs> I'm okay with that. It's better than Tingle. And then I, uh, or is it? I showed the video to my roommate, and he's like, "His name is Tindall. No, I looked at. It, I was like, "Oh, no!" I no. redid everything. <laughs> How dare you? I know, I'm sorry. Um, so, just to get started, um, what what was your inspiration for pursuing a life of theater? Um, I was a wayward youth, and uh, <laughs> I never actually finished the eighth grade for various reasons. And I ended up going to this private school in ninth grade, and uh, I was there way late. And they were like, hey, uh, all the electives are full, you're gonna be at dance. I was like, no, no, I'm not. <laughs> and they finally made room to put me in theater, and it was a really small school, and I got a lot of uh, attention. Um, so that's kind of where it started, uh, accidentally. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, my, my need for attention grew from there. <laughs> and that's the end of the answer. <laughs> that's nice. the end. Very nice. <laughs> uh, the second question I got for you. Um, do you think that doing like like online fan dubs like the you know bridge series and stuff like that is a good credit to use in a resume for like trying to be a voice actor? Um, it's all a hustle. If you can sell it right, I would say go for it. Especially if, if it's if it's the only thing you have for your resume, then go ahead and put it on there. Especially if it's some like Team Four Star stuff because they got a lot of, they got a lot of good stuff going yeah. on. Uh, and that's a, that's the a really cool thing about. Um, you know, everything that YouTube and the internet in general has to offer right now is, um, I think if you really are passionate about this, then you can take more personal responsibility to, uh, follow the art yourself. Like, I'm, I'm kind of just a corporate shill, but, uh, I'm, I admire the people out there who are creating things. Um, content creation, I think, is way more important these days than just, uh, you know, being a part of the machine. Sure. Um, so yeah, put it on there. And really, they're gonna, I don't know, it's, it's tricky. Sometimes they're gonna look at your resume and go, oh, stuff, okay, who are you? <laughs> so uh, it's better to have something than nothing. But you know, those are the first things you wanna take off when you start to get other things. Sure, I got you. Um, so for this interview, I knew, I say this to all, all, almost all the guests, I knew who you were, I did not know your work. 
Um, I've not seen Attack on Titan. I did. I hadn't seen Tokyo Ghoul until I found out I was coming to the con. Um, and so I started watching Tokyo Ghoul, and my girlfriend's like, "Well, it's like, it's a lot like Dead Man Wonderland." I'm like, eh. "I'm also in that." I know you are, actually. Um, I didn't mention that. <laughs> Embarrassment. Um, <laughs> but you know, so I'm like, man, I'll watch Tokyo Ghoul because I need to kind of know your work so I can talk about, you know, we can talk about things. Um, and I started watching it, and I got really in, like, is really good. Like, I don't know, Dead Man Wonderland was kind of off to me. It's not bad, but it's not the greatest. I'm sorry. <laughs> but Tokyo Ghoul is like, you know, I immediately clicked with Kaneki. Because mm -hmm. um, it's way more than just, what's going on? All this crazy stuff has happened, blood and gore everywhere. And it's like, he's this kid who has to deal with this insane situation. And it's just like, you know, it, I don't want to say relate, but it like, it, I resonated. I, I understood. Yeah. Um, and it's really cool. And I really like that. So my question for you is, what is it like being the voice of Kaneki Kid? Uh, it's great. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't know, it's, I, he's, he's my favorite character too, uh, and I think it's a, it's a character, I don't want to use the word trope, because that has some negative connotation, but it's a, it is a character type that we see in anime a lot, and I think that Tokyo Ghoul has done a very good job of kind of demonstrating that, that, uh, story. I agree. So they, they where, it, like, Guilty Crown reminds me of, um, it's because it's about, you know, uh, a young boy that, that is dealing with a lot of power and responsibility. Right. Uh, the, the classic tale. But, uh, with Tokyo Ghoul, you cut out all the fat. There's no, like, food festival episode or beach episode. Like, there's huge <laughs> character arcs. Insert um, filler here. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. They get rid of that. And so, you know, you, you see uh, Toka and Kaneki at the beginning, and you see them uh, by the end, and there's uh, it's a whole different relationship and paradigm. Um, and that uh, that combined with, you know, beautiful music and beautiful artwork, just it, it's, it touches me as well. <laughs> and I touch it. Okay. <laughs> That's not where I thought that was going. <laughs> um... The next one I got for you, um, so we talked about, at the very beginning, about how you were, like, what inspired you to become an actor. What is your favorite part about still being an actor? Getting to hang out with you. Oh, my God. Look it's true, though. Guy. No, cons are really Look fun. at this guy. <laughs> um, I did get into it. With, the theater is really, really amazing because you have an instant connection in response to your audience. You, you can literally feel their reaction. Um, and you get to take kind of complete responsibility for your character. Yes, your director tells you where to go and what to do, basically. But once the show opens, no one can stop you from doing anything you want. Um, <laughs> uh, and so I really, really miss that having, like, voice acting has been great for me because it's like a career and uh, it's allowed me to eat. Uh, and it's still very enjoyable, but it, you don't get that same pure sense of play. So being able to come to, literally, I mean, being able to hang out with you and come to conventions and do panels is the closest I get to still being able to do theater, because I get to be in front of people and do whatever I want. Do you have any, uh, any like, Kaneki-related con stories that you want to tell real quick? Kaneki-related con stories? Um, we could tell them about the charity auction on Friday. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> it's not so much Kaneki-related, but I did sell myself for charity. Uh, <laughs> Those people, you can't see them, but I can. I, we danced the night away. <laughs> and I lost my shirt. I'm at the Friday charity action, actually. Oh, what happened there? And where you were giving out the postcards. Oh, the postcards, and oh yeah. Kaneki about one. That was fun. Uh, I, uh, I had some postcards with Kaneki on them, because I sell Kaneki merchandise. Because uh, I'm a sellout. Um, and for charity, I personalized insults for everyone. So that was fun. And a Kaneki cosplayer bought the last one. A Kaneki cosplayer bought the last one, that's right. Do you remember the insult? Oh. Huh. <laughs> I said that uh, uh, his mask smelt like Steve Buscemi looks. Yes. I'm sorry, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> He's not gonna watch this. <laughs> you don't know that. Well, that's true. Maybe. I doubt it. I doubt he's gonna watch it. Well. <laughs> um, so the last question I got for you. Is there any specific, like, tools for the craft that, you know, aspiring cosplayers should be using. Cosplayers? No, I mean, sorry, um, voice aspiring actors. voice actors. Mm, tools. Uh, yes, okay, uh, there's a buttload. Uh, the number one thing that I would say is all roads lead to Mecca. Um, there's no one right way to do this, and there's a lot of actors who, uh, 
employ completely different tactics than I do. Uh, but for me, the most effective thing was my theater experience and my training uh, with uh, what's known as the Link Later technique. Kristen Link Later is a voice uh, uh, teacher, and she has a book called Unleashing the Natural Voice. People. Um, <laughs> That uh, really helps you figure out how to look at your body as a resonating chamber and to uh, uh, stop trying to consciously be inspired by intention and, and create emotion instead of <laughs> instead of uh, you know getting emotional. You uh, you allow the emotions to take over you, and it's a, it's a weird, slight difference. But it's it's like if you can imagine what it's like to uh, consciously be aware of your breath without controlling it. That's an exercise that sounds kind of stupid, but it's. It's very useful in letting go of that part of your brain that stops you from from being what babies are, which is crying as soon as you feel the urge to cry. Uh, see, I'm, if we keep going, I'm going to talk about Link later for like an hour. Um, <laughs> but that, uh, you know, uh, uh, that and just, I guess, uh, acting is like uh, an athletic sport in that you have to practice to be good, and if you stop practicing, you will get bad. Um, so keep keep up, keep doing it. Uh, the, especially commercial. But my first advice for aspiring voice actors is if you can do anything else, go do that. Because it's it's not a lot of money. Don't ever go try to find your passion. Because if you're trying to find it, then it's not your passion. You, if you have to, if you wake up every morning unable to do anything except like try to act or not try to, but uh, right. yeah, but to think and do. Then uh, it ain't fun. Don't do it. If yeah, well, if, if if you can do anything else, go do that. And I realized at one point that I can't, I can't not do this. So here I am, and I spent a decade poorer than I am now um, because I, you know, eighteen working eighteen hours a day so that I could be on stage. Um, so there are versions of that for everyone. If you're at home making your own things, recording your own stuff, put it on YouTube. Keep keep going, and uh, just uh, on a business level. Uh, the first thing you're going to want is a commercial demo reel if you're trying to become uh, a professional actor that, that gets paid money. And that's a minute long demo reel that you can make up out of copy. Um, there's a lot of like online websites that can give you good advice on how to do that. I don't know what they are, but... But they exist. Yeah. Um, and it's, it, you know, uh, Ian Sinclair does this interesting thing. Uh, ooh, I said his name. It's going to be on the internet. Ooh. Um, he does this thing where he'll like listen to Pandora and skip all the songs and just listen to the commercials, <laughs> uh, and it it works. So uh, you know, imitating uh, styles, figuring out what your range is, what uh, what you can actually accurately play. Um, if you're if you're a large, you know, deep voiced male, you're probably not going to sound like Kaneki. So you want to find the characters that are right for you. So that's all. <laughs> so hopefully, some of that made sense. <laughs> I'm sure they watch it enough times. Yeah, just get, yeah, yeah. Just, just, just watch it on loop, over and over. I need the views, please. <laughs> but until then, I'm Frank Wack, and I will see you all next time. Bye.